Welcome to our Scary Stories channel, where we delve into the spine-chilling world of the supernatural. In today's video, we'll be sharing real-life ghost stories from home health nurses, those brave souls who not only care for the sick and dying, but also sometimes encounter the unexplainable. These stories reveal the mysterious and eerie experiences that nurses face when the line between the living and the dead becomes blurred. As a story narrator, I am a nurse myself, an ICU nurse, that is. Therefore, these stories hit close to home. So, turn down the lights, get comfortable, and prepare yourself for some truly terrifying tales. Story number one. There was a 68-year-old man with a foot ulcer that had become infected. I would go and cleanse his wound, wrap it, and give him antibiotics. I saw him three times a week. I knew that his foot would probably need to be amputated because it wasn't healing. The doctor had already said he wanted to amputate, but the man wouldn't give his consent. He said he'd rather die than have his foot chopped off. Since we couldn't do anything else, all we could do was cleanse the wound and give him antibiotics. During the daytime, his son and grandchildren were at work or school, so he was the only one at home. I usually went at 10 a.m. to see him. I remember the first time I visited him. His son told me that their door had a lock that could be opened by punching in four numbers. He gave me the code so I could let myself in instead of making his father come to the door because of his foot. When I got there, I rang the doorbell to let the grandpa know I was there so I wouldn't scare him. After that, I punched in the numbers and opened the door. As soon as I walked in, the whole house had this rotten smell. I knew it was coming from the grandpa's foot ulcer. I saw a granny sitting on the couch in the living room, but the TV wasn't on. I waved hello to her. I knew the grandpa was in his room since he was in pain and he couldn't walk. I walked into his bedroom and he was in bed listening to the radio. When he saw me, he said hello and got up to sit on the side of the bed. I told him that I'm there to cleanse his wound. I gave him some pain medication and then I started cleansing his wound and wrapped it. After that, I gave him some antibiotics before I left. Two days later, I went back to their house. When I arrived, I saw that the grandpa was in his wheelchair, sunbathing in the backyard. I could see him through their sliding glass door. The house still smelled like rotten flesh. I walked past the hallway and saw the granny sitting on the bed in a room with the door opened. I waved hello to her and she kind of smiled at me. I went outside to see the grandpa. When I got there I said hello and told him I was there to cleanse his wound and give him some medicine. When we were outside there was no smell of rotten flesh. I unwrapped his wound and there was really no smell of rotten flesh. As a nurse we have to smell the wound. So I did try to smell it, and there was no smell. The wound actually didn't look too bad. I thought to myself that maybe because we were outside, I couldn't smell it. As I was wrapping the grandpa's wound, I asked him if grandma was okay. Grandpa said, Who? Granny. Granny died a month ago due to a stroke. That's why no one takes care of me, and that's why my wound got bad. When I heard that, I felt dizzy, but I needed to clarify, so I asked him who else was staying home with him. That's when Grandpa said that he was the only one at home. Now I had goosebumps all over my body. Later, when I got a chance to talk to the Grandpa's son on the phone, he confirmed that the Granny had died about a month ago due to a stroke. Three weeks later, the Grandpa's foot infection spread to the bones. He still refused to have the doctor amputate his foot to save his life. The bacteria entered his bloodstream and his kidneys shut down. They took him to the hospital and after four days, he died. Some people believe that when you die and start to rot, if people see your wandering soul, your soul will smell like your rotting body. That's just what some people believe. In my case of taking care of the grandpa, I know that the rotten smell was not from his wound. It was from the granny in the house. 
She had just died a month ago. Maybe her spirit still smelled like her decomposed body in the coffin underground. Story number two. I had been caring for this 71-year-old grandma for five months as a home health nurse. I got along with her family as if they were my own relatives. They trusted me. And often, they would even refer to me as a sister. One day, during the New Year celebration, the sister Pang called me. I wasn't scheduled to visit the grandma that day, but Pang called and said her family was out of town at the New Year celebration. Only her grandma was home, but when Pang tried calling, no one answered, so she was worried. Pang was at work and wasn't able to go back home to check on her grandma. Pang had already contacted her family, and they had tried calling the grandma too, but still, no one picked up. Pang asked if I could go check on her grandma, just in case she had fallen or something. She asked me to call her when I got there, so she can open the garage remotely with her cell phone, allowing me to enter. She told me that the door inside the garage leading into the house shouldn't be locked. When I arrived, I called Pang, and she opened the garage for me. As I was taking my shoes off, I thought I heard talking and mumblings from inside the house. As I opened the door and stepped inside, everything was silent. The voices I thought I heard talking stopped completely. The house was eerily quiet, with a bad vibe hanging in the air. I started calling, Grandma, Grandma, I'm back to see you. I called her a few times, but she didn't answer. I went to her room, but she wasn't there. I searched everywhere in the house and even in the backyard, but she was nowhere to be found. Then, when I tried to open the bathroom door in the hallway, it was locked. There was no light coming from under the door. I called Grandma a few more times, but still didn't hear anything. The bathroom door lock was one of those you can unlock by poking a stick into the hole, so I took out a Q-tip from my nursing bag and unlocked it. When I entered the bathroom and turned on the light, I saw Grandma sitting on the toilet. She was already pale yellow. I checked on her, but she was gone. She was leaning back, her eyes and mouth wide open. It seemed like her heart had stopped while she was using the bathroom. I flushed the toilet and used my phone to call the family to come home. The light in the bathroom was one of those motion sensor types that turn off if there's no movement for 15 minutes. That's why she was sitting in the dark. As I was talking to the family with the door wide open, I saw the grandma walk past the door in her traditional funeral clothes. She was wearing a blue funeral shoe on her right foot, but no shoe on her left. My eyes filled with tears and loudly said, Grandma, I'm only here to help you. Don't do that to me, please. It was scary seeing her soul walking down the hallway while I'm with her body in the bathroom. After that, I closed the door and waited for the family to get home. Once they arrived, we carried the grandma to bed. We cleaned her up and dressed her in her traditional funeral clothes. When the family took out the pair of blue funeral shoes for the grandma, one of them was missing. The left shoe was nowhere to be found. I had never been so creeped out in my line of work. Story number three. I'm a home health nurse, and back in 2013, I had an experience that still gives me chills. One Friday afternoon, I went to visit a patient of Hmong ethnicity who was very sick and receiving hospice care at home. She had liver cancer that had metastasized to her brain. When I arrived, the family was performing a shamanic ritual in the house. The shaman was jumping on his bench and chanting. A shamanic ritual is usually performed on sick and dying individual to see if there's anything wrong in the spirit side of things. I am the same race and ethnicity as the family and the patient. They had requested a nurse who understand their language, culture, and religious beliefs. Therefore, I was assigned to this patient. The family knew I was coming to give the sick aunt her medicine in her bedroom upstairs. The family greeted me warmly, and the son led me to the aunt's room. Inside the room, the aunt was talking to herself. When I got there, I introduced myself, 
telling her I was there to give her some medicine to ease her pain and to prevent seizures. But every time she spoke to me, she wasn't looking at me. She was staring at the wall, talking to someone who wasn't there. Some of her words were slurred, almost as if she was mumbling. I knew that with the tumor in her brain, her condition would continue to deteriorate. I also knew that she was prone to hallucinations, so I calmly prepared the medicine to administer through her IV. As I approached her bedside, I reassured her that I was giving her something to help with the pain. Suddenly she stopped talking, looked directly at me and said, They're here. Confused, I asked, Who? Who's here? She replied, Them. Right there. Four of them. They came to collect the debt from me. They're right there. She pointed to the wall, but there was nothing there. I wasn't frightened. I knew her condition was worsening, and I attributed it to her hallucinations. But then, her hand, still pointing at the wall, began to tremble. Before I knew it, her back arched, and her arms and legs locked into a strange position. Her eyes widened, fixed on the ceiling. She was having a seizure. I stayed by her side, monitoring her breathing and checking her oxygen levels, which remained stable. Her body was contorted, but she wasn't in any immediate danger. After about two minutes, her muscles relaxed, and I repositioned her into a more comfortable posture. By this point, she had slipped into unconsciousness, completely unaware of what had happened. This wasn't the first time. She had experienced seizures before. While it was frightening for the family at first, I explained that seizures are common in patients with brain tumors. I advised them to ensure she didn't hurt herself during these episodes and that she would usually return to normal afterward. As I prepared to leave and go back downstairs, the shamanic ritual had already ended. I overheard the men talking, and I distinctly heard the shaman say, They said she still owes them money. They're wondering why she's going to die before she can pay off her debt. So they've come to make sure she settles it before she passes. Don't worry, we'll burn Joss papers for them so that your mother will be free of debt when she goes, allowing her to be reincarnated. Even though I've witnessed plenty of hallucinations in my line of work, I can honestly say that when I heard the shaman's words, I felt chills all over my body. The aunt had mentioned that they were there to collect their debt before she had the seizure. A week later, the aunt passed away. Story number four. I have a patient who is around 76 years old. I call her Ty. Ty means grandma in my mother language. She's elderly and has suffered from a stroke, so she can't walk anymore, and she's nearing the end of her life. Her kidneys and liver are shutting down. I visit her house four times a week to give her medicine to help her sleep and manage her pain. Ty is always in bed and unable to walk. I taught the family how to bathe her and how to change her adult diaper. When I'm not there, it's the family that takes care of Ty's. One night, around 7 p.m., I was driving to see Ty's again. They live in a dark neighborhood so when I turned off the main street and made a right turn into their area, something immediately caught my attention. I saw someone walking in our traditional funeral clothes. I'm the same ethnicity as Thai, so I knew what our traditional funeral clothes looks like. I couldn't clearly see the face, but the arms were tiny and wrinkled, like those of an elderly person. When I saw this, even without seeing the face, I felt like the person walking in the dark was Ty's. I was a little scared, but I kept driving to Ty's house. When I arrived, I knocked on the door and waited, but no one answered. I called the family's house phone, but no one picked up. Then I heard a car pull up and I turned to look. It was the grandson, Tom. He turned off his car and got out to come and open the door. He said he had just gotten off work and knew I would be there so he tried to come as fast as he could. He also told me that the family was at a relative's house. Tom opened the door, and we both went inside. As soon as we entered, it felt strange. Even without seeing Tice in her room, 
I could sense that something had happened. Tom was quiet too, as if he felt it as well. We heard a Keng instrument playing on the radio, coming from Tice's room. The Keng is a bamboo instrument that are often used for our traditional funeral. Sometimes the radio station would play the songs of the Keng too, but they'll never play the songs that are being played at funerals. Tom and I went in to check on Tai. When we opened the door, we saw Tai in a fouler position, with her mouth wide open. Her face was as pale as paper. She was listening to a radio station that was playing the Kang. I tried to wake her up, but she wouldn't respond. I listened to her heart, and there was no heartbeat. When I touched her, she was still a little warm. She might have just died before I arrived. Or she might have passed away when the Kang song came on the radio. Tom called the family to come back home. I checked Ty again, and she really was gone. I pronounced her death and helped the family arrange for a funeral home. I didn't stay to watch the family put on Ty's traditional funeral clothes because I already knew how she looked. I had seen her on the street before I saw her inside the house. That's all for this video. Thank you for making all the way through and supporting my stories. Have a wonderful day or night.